Okay, let's get started. First, make sure you have gathered all of your supplies and your equipment before you begin the process of hoof trimming your sheep or goats. For instance, you may need a pair of gloves to protect your hands from the manure on the animal's hooves or to prevent an injury from handling the animals using tools or any of the equipment that you may use during this process. You will also need a pair of trimming shears or whatever type of hoof trimming tool you have decided to purchase for your animals. A brush can be very useful in removing manure or any debris from the hooves before you start the hoof trimming process. This will make it much easier to see what you're doing. A rasp is a long handled file that has a coarse edge. It can be helpful if you're having difficulties leveling the hooves of your animal. Make sure whatever tool you use, always keep a bottle of blood stop powder to stop any bleeding that you might have caused when trimming the hooves. Another tip I would like to share with you is to allow your animals to graze on your pastures at least one hour in the morning before you start your hoof trimming. The dew from the grass will help soften the hooves and make them so much easier to trim. Now you have to decide which technique you're going to use to restrain your animal. Now, watch how Gary leans over the shoulder of the doe while blocking her from moving forward with his right leg. Next, he picks up her left leg and bends it at the knee to view the sole of the hoof. Gary is able to use this restraining technique because the doe is very docile and she is used to being handled, so she doesn't protest as much. If your animals are really too difficult to handle, you may need to purchase a head gate with a chute or make one of your own. The head gate should be designed to prevent the animal from moving backwards or forwards. You can then open up the side panel of the chute and begin to trim your goat or sheep's hooves. The only problem you may experience at this point is that the animal might decide to sit down instead of stand up to get their hooves trimmed, which may make it quite challenging. But the more often you trim the hooves of your goat and sheep, they should get used to being handled and at some point become more easier to work with. If you don't want to purchase a head gate with a chute, Gary is going to show you another method for restraining your animals using either a rope or a lead. What I'm going to do is go through the opening loop of the dog leash and create a second loop. And with that second loop, just go right over the horns. And once I've gone over the horns, I can actually take my goat and I hit the fence post and fence line. And anything that's pretty stable, just to keep it from moving left and right, getting away from it. Stabilize the front end. That's up to me to stabilize the rear end of it. Now, that makes it easier for me to trim a, trim a rear hook. I can actually do this without her putting up so much resistance. Another option for restraining your animals is using the stanchion. 
If your animals are already used to being handled, or if you've used a stanchion before, then a stanchion may be an ideal choice for you for trimming the hooves of your goats or your sheep. If this is the first time you've used one, try putting some feed in their bucket each time you use the equipment. Eventually, they should associate the time they spend standing in the stanchion as a pleasant experience and may be more cooperative when it comes to trimming their hooves next time. Sheep are one of the easiest animals on the farm to trim their hooves. When the sheep is placed on its backside in a sitting position, they can become quite relaxed. This is a good time to give her a health check as well as to trim her hooves. But all sheep may not be as cooperative in this restraining position. Before we go on, I just want to mention that all of the restraining techniques we use for goats can also be used for sheep. Premier One has also designed a deck chair for sheep to recline in while they get their hooves trimmed. Okay, let's get back with Gary. Goats and sheep are from the class Mammalian, and they're also from the order Atriodactyla. This means that they have a cloven hoof, which is divided into two toes, and each toe has a heel. The bottom of the hoof is called the sole. In this example, the goat's hooves are pretty overgrown. In fact, the walls of the hooves have grown over the sole. Your goal should be to remove the excess wall that covers the sole of the hoof by clipping away the excess snail. Gary begins by clipping away all of the excess wall, the nails between the toes, and the heel of each toe to expose the sole of the hoof. When you're clipping and you notice that the white area starts to turn a little bit pink, that means you're getting kind of close to where the blood supply is. So you might want to stop at that point. Otherwise, the animal may start to bleed. If your animal does start to bleed, use your blood stop powder to pour it on the area where the bleeding is occurring. If the animal doesn't stop bleeding, you may need to call your veterinary. Well, if you have a, a real good back, it's not so bad. Real good back and don't have a problem with arthritis or anything in your hands, mm -hmm. it's not so bad. But if you got back problems or uh, arthritis, you definitely want some help. And uh, a shoot would help. Mm -hmm. Or sharing, uh, rotating with somebody to help you trim them. Mm -hmm. That is a whole lot better. And when she sets it down, oh yeah. Once you have done the front hooves, it's time to work on the back. Here, Gary removes the excess wall from the hoof. Right, we're going to go into some transformation here. Transform this hoof to make it look like you again. rotten potato and getting down to the good part. Notice how he clips the tips of the toenails so they no longer look like snowshoes but look like a hoof instead. Here, he is also removing the heel to level it with the rest of the foot. What makes this so hard right now is that the hooves are so dry. It's 
we have to do it in the morning when there's moisture or you run water holes you have them stand in an area where the water would sit up and soak those holes just like you would if you were in the shower and that would definitely soften them up It'd go through them a whole lot easier As you can see right here, there's a little change in color. Mm -hmm. That's not actually down to a blood vessel or anything like that. There's one part about that part that's hard to explain. It can be a natural color. Now, it could be a spot where this blood can probably start to come up. Mm -hmm. And where you'd find out for sure, just take your finger, press on it a little bit, and see if it's wet. If it's no moisture, then there's no, don't worry about it. It's, it's not blood. Mm -hmm. See, it's not even smearing. I spent so much time with him that so she was just well broken in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the pattern you don't really worry about if it's all clumpy and choppy looking. Mm -hmm. That will wear itself down even on its own. Okay. But that is a whole lot better. Mm -hmm. than what it does. Again, the girl has no shoes. Mm -hmm. They'll develop quite a bit of heel faster than they would the rest of the padding. Mm -hmm. And that heel can actually be cut off since they don't they're always on pasture, they don't have anything like concrete they're walking.
questions for? Well, I know where to start at, but where do I start? Well, there's uh, actually where it starts to bow out slightly. Mm -hmm. If you can get as close to that part as possible, you should never have to worry about blood. Well, then what you want is like a flat. If it's flat, it's over flat, like that. Mm -hmm. Right, even before it starts to curve, just as it starts to curve, you want to come down close to that area. Mm -hmm. And if you can get as close to that as possible, and once you see any change of color like I see right here, mm -hmm. that's where you can stop. Okay. That pinkish right there, right? And most of them have a, if it's not pink, it'll be a, it'll, you'll see a little grayish looking, little light mm -hmm. color. And that, that's not quite good, but it's close to it. But anyway, that's what you want. It's okay. like again. Okay, the padding itself, it'll wear that padding down even. Okay, hold it, okay, hold it back up, I'm gonna get a picture of what you did. 